What about that? I will make this as short as I can. I'm a 51-year-old man. I've been divorced from my ex-wife, going on five years next month. My ex and I were married 23 years. In year 22 of our marriage, she had a six-month-long physical affair with an old boyfriend from her college days. I knew nothing about the affair until one of our two sons, the older boy, told me what was going on. I hired a private eye and he tracked my wife and her old boyfriend to his apartment about 25 miles from the town where we live. She had gone out that day on the pretext of spending the day shopping, when in reality she was spending the day with him. The P.I. got me pictures and times and I confronted her the next week. She admitted to the affair and I immediately moved out and went to live with my elderly dad across town. I filed for divorce that same week. She continued on with her affair with the boyfriend. After our divorce was final a year or so later, she and him got married. It was a great big wedding, with all our old friends attending, and even my sons went. I of course felt deeply insulted and betrayed by this, as I felt my sons and friends should have supported me. Instead, they supported my cheating ex. I cut off all contact with these old friends, and my relationship with my two boys has been strained from that point onwards. We don't talk often. I used to be very close to my boys but I guess they felt closer to their mom. I guess it was not the happy marriage she was hoping for, because he left her last year and their divorce will be final sometime this month. He also left her with a huge pile of debt. When I divorced her, I gave her our paid-off house that I built and five acres of land worth about 250. Her new husband moved in with her. My son told me that she took out a new mortgage on the house to pay off her husband's debt a year or so before they split up. She is a teacher and will be retiring here in the next couple of years and there is no way she can make the mortgage now since payments will be well over 15 a month. Well guess who has been calling me out of the blue lately? Yep, you guessed it. My ex-wife now all of a sudden has warm glowing memories of our marriage. She called me yesterday and asked me how I was doing. Then she proceeded to tell me that she misses me and wants us to start dating again. I told her that was funny, since this was the first time in five years she had called me or even deigned to talk to me. I also pointed out that she had also done a good job of vilifying me to everyone we knew, telling everyone in her family and all our acquaintances what a tyrant and horrible husband I had been to her. Of course, she said that that wasn't true and that was all exaggerated. Anyways, she wants to get together this coming weekend for dinner. I am single, have been dating and I have been enjoying my life as a bachelor. I have lots of lady friends who share their time with me and I don't really feel like ever getting married again. So, I guess my question is, should I meet with her to hear what she has to say? I know that her money problems are at the heart of her sudden reinterest in me. I guess I have a sort of morbid curiosity about what she is going to say. There are a lot of things I would like to say to her and none of them very nice. I just wonder if meeting with her a good idea is. I'm afraid that only more pain will come of it. As for why my boys stuck with their mother I will never know for sure. I guess they felt her being attacked by the town gossips and so they had a need to protect her. I don't know. I guess I should say they never sided with her. My older son was furious with her when he found out about her affair. He did not speak to her for a few months. I guess they both just realized it was going to happen no matter how they felt so they just went along with it. I was gone away working the oil fields when they were young and they were very close to their mom. But once they were in high school, they spent most of their free time with me, hunting and fishing and dirt biking and such. I was deeply hurt when they attended the wedding, but I guess they wanted to keep the peace with their mom. But when the going gets tight and they need help, guess who they come to? She is one of those women that give all women a bad name, always looking for the next person to support her. For shame, tell her you will do her a major favor and give her a bucket to save her tears and so she can remember why she is in this situation in the first place. You have a few ladies giving you attention right now, why throw that away for someone who cheated on you and talked down about you? You should be happy to be rid of her. A karma bus came back and bit her right in the bottom. This is what I think. I have three women who I date. One of them is an old ex-friend of my wife's who hates her and couldn't wait to jump in bed with me after the divorce. One gal is an old friend of mine who lives in another town, and the third one is a local female cop. I'm getting more bonding than I ever did as a teenager and I'm enjoying life. Another reason I don't want to get back together with my ex is because she gained a ton of weight after her husband left her. She must weigh over 200 pounds now. She was always petite when we were married. Now she looks like a cow. I think another reason she is interested in me is that I am dating all these women and I guess it irks her that I didn't just curl up and die when she divorced me. I want her to explain to me why she felt it necessary to lie about our marriage to everyone we knew and make me out to sound like I was some kind of demon. I want her to explain to me why she felt it was okay to turn all our friends and family against me. I never did a damn thing to deserve any of that. I was a good husband. You know what is funny? My older son told me that on the night her husband walked out he found her curled up on her living room floor crying hysterically, and she was calling out my name. She actually asked my son to fetch me and bring me to her but he refused. I felt kind of good about that. When I found out about her affair I went berserk, called her every nasty name you can call a woman. My sons were teens and they had never heard me call her those things or act that way. I'm ashamed to say I behaved badly. 
I was hurt and angry. I guess that may be one of the reasons they felt they needed to protect her. I don't think they understood the full scope of what she did. I have only myself to blame for that. Another thing that really hurt me was that our church family supported her, knowing full well she was in an adulterous relationship. I had known many of these people most of my life, but they turned their backs on me. Even today many of these people will go out of their way to avoid me when they see me on the street or in the store. And I was blameless. My ex and her husband even continued attending the church after our divorce and their marriage. I felt completely cast off and ostracized. I don't go to church anymore. This pretty much did me in for religion. I still believe in God though. At least my old pastor stood up for something. He refused to marry them when she asked him. He was retiring at the time due he didn't care what she or the other church churchgoers thought. He's actually still a good friend of mine. I'm also hatching a plan. I'm having my current property appraised this week, and if it is as valuable as I think it is, I may have a way to make myself a big pile of money and help the ex with her financial predicament at the same time, thus getting her off my back forever. But I have to get the numbers. That means I need to meet with her to find out how deep in the red she is. I spent an exhausting night with Cop Lady last night, and in the afterglow, I lay there thinking why on earth would I ever give this up and even go back to that porker I divorced. Here is my plan if it works. Currently I am living on my deceased dad's farm. It is 200 acres of good farmland, with two barns, a two-story turn-of-the-century house that has been completely refurbished and upgraded, a fully functioning silo, conveyor and a bunch of farm equipment. At auction I could probably get 30 for the equipment. I will see two 10-acre parcels to my sons for their use. The other 180 acres and house I will sell. I'm pretty sure I could get upwards of 750,000. My son figures his mom owes around 200 in debts, because that is what she took the mortgage out on our home when her husband moved in. If I can get the farm sold for what I want, then I will turn around and pay her 200 cash for the house and 5 acres it sits on. She will move out and go live her life. I will then flip the house for its appraised value of 300 or so and make 100 in equity. All of that money, the money from the sale of the farm and the sale of my ex's house will make me a fat nest egg. I gave her the house because I wanted a quick divorce and my sons needed a good home to live in. It was the decision I made and I think it was the right one. It did piss me off to no end when her husband moved in, but it was done. There was nothing I could do but swallow it and move on. There is no way she could pay for the mortgage on that house when she retires. Her teacher's retirement will give her maybe 2000 a month if she draws it now. I would estimate she is paying upwards of 15 or so for her mortgage now. There is no way she would have enough money to live on after she makes the monthly payment. She will either have to keep teaching and not retire or she'll have to launch into another good-paying job immediately. All I can do is put the question to her and offer her the peace pipe. I will tell her I am not interested in dating her, but if the farm appraises and sells for what I hope, then I will make her that offer, which will be 200 cash for her freedom from her debt. This is just an idea that I'm formulating. Until I get some real numbers, I won't make any move. Believe me I understand and agree with what you are all saying. If the numbers come out to where I think they will land, then I will offer her the 200. She may very well laugh and tell me to go get stuffed, and that will be okay too. Either way, it will be the last conversation I would have with her concerning anything having to do with us or our life. I do not plan to take this woman back for any reason. This would just be a business deal and nothing more. I give it a 20% probability of her agreeing, but if I don't try, I definitely won't succeed. To be honest I'm just looking to use her like she used me. But I won't screw her over like she did me. She has never apologized and I don't expect she ever will give me an honest heartfelt apology. At this point I don't want one. I would like my good name restored, but she will not have any reason to help do that unless I take her back and that is just not going to happen. To clear up the matter, my sons are now both in their twenties and living on their own. The ex lives in that big house by herself. She is unable to keep it up. The beautiful lawn and grounds that I used to keep so immaculate are overgrown. The house needs a new roof and paint badly. She is letting it get into a state of disrepair. There is no way she could sell it for 300 unless she hires a full crew to come in and spruce things up. Only I have the money and means to make that happen. I would pay her 200000 and then spend maybe 5000 or so to get it spruced up to sell. Of course, this is all contingent on her accepting my offer. Like I say, she will probably tell me to go pound sand. And that would be okay too. I would not be out any money either way. I'm giving my son's acreage because their grandfather wanted them to have some land. I'm seeing that one of his dying wishes is fulfilled. It looks like my scheme to buy her out won't happen. My real estate agent found out there is a big tax lien on her house. Not sure if it is an IRS lien or not. He is checking it out. Well, I'm no angel. I had lots of faults. We both did, but I thought we were happy. I never yelled at her or cut her down or beat her. Was I as romantic or as affectionate as I could have been? Probably not. But we loved each other, rarely fought. I spent 25 years in the oil fields working my way up from roughneck to crew boss to regional super. The last five years of our marriage I was into good money and I built our house. I spent a lot of time away from home, but I thought I was building our nest egg. 
She stayed home and did a good job of raising two boys. I wish I could have had a job working closer to home, but I would travel 150 miles where I would work four 12th work weeks and go home for three days at a time. I spent all those work weeks sleeping in a camp trailer. I thought my ex and I were working towards something together. I was wrong. Why did I let her have the house? The boys wanted to be with her more than me, they were teens. I had a place to stay with my dad, so I chose to let her have it. I thought the affair would burn out. I had no idea she would marry the piece of crap. He and she both trashed my name to everyone. They said I stole from our church, a lie, she said I abused her emotionally, another lie, and she accused me of sleeping with women while I was away at work, blatant lie. As a much-loved teacher my wife was respected and adored in the community. I'm a shy working guy who has hung out with the same small circle of friends since I was five. So, judge away. She called again today. I'm meeting her at a coffee shop at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Don't worry folks, I won't be offering her any money or taking her back. I just want to hear what she has to say for herself. We met and even though she prettied herself up she still looked sloppy. We sat in a corner alone and started off talking about the boys. Then the conversation went about where I predicted, was I still mad at her? No, had I forgiven her? No, why not? She never asked for forgiveness. Would I be interested in dating? Heck no, why not? I gave her three younger reasons. She meant nothing to me anymore. Only as the mother of my boys. Few weeping and crock tears. There was no chance for us to be a couple again. Only if she lost 80 pounds and competed with the others for my attention. Few righteous indignation. Silence. Toffee. More silence. So, she has no shot then. No, maybe if you recant all the lies you spread about me and publicly apologize in front of the church. More silence. Frown. End of conversation get up and leave in a huff. Oh yes, he used her. He tricked her. He played her. I am her true love in life. It was all him. Of course, she had no control over what happened. I told that was a lie and she was a willing conspirator and partner. Once he was through with her, he dumped her. She did not like that. Now my younger son is mad at me for making his mom cry. He will wait a while for his 10 acres. Like I said, I was just a normal husband, I think. I probably spent too much time gone and the ex got bored. I do think she got suckered by this guy to an extent. She was his third wife. It does not excuse her awful behavior though. I've told her that and told my boys that. I already had that heart-to-heart -heart talk with my boys. Told them their mother cheated and lied and that I was not the villain. They didn't care. They only cared about who was holding the purse strings. My ex spoiled them and bought them anything they wanted. I was the responsible one so of course was the bad guy. It has nothing to do with the land. It has to do with respect. Like his mother, my younger son respects no one. He's 21, he's greedy and materialistic just like her. I did everything I could to teach that boy good morals and to be a man, but it didn't take. His older brother was spoiled rotten also, but he and I managed to stay close even when we were often angry with each other. We enjoy each other's company now. I did find out from my realtor that there is an IRS lien on her house. I don't know how much for. Both boys chose not to go to college. My younger son works at an auto supply. My older one is a logger. There are other reasons my younger son and I don't get along well. My sons know nothing about the land inheritance yet, so the issue about the 10 acres is not an issue. I'm steward of my dad's land, well my land now, and I will choose when my boys get their inheritance. My younger son will get his share, just not any time in the near future. If I see some maturity, some goal setting, some responsibility, then I will give him his allotment. I cannot control what my ex tells them. They are both smart boys. If they cannot figure out the truth, there is little I can do. Beating them over the heads with their mom's stupidity will not solve the issue. They know what I know, they know what I feel. If they cannot use that knowledge to make the right decisions then there is nothing I can do. I do use protection whenever I sleep with these women. And I want to point out that they are not my revolving harem. I sleep with the police gal more than the other two. I have not slept with my lady friend from the other town in over a month. My ex is ex-girlfriend and I get together maybe two or three times a month, usually at her instigation. And even then, we don't always end up in bed. Sometimes we just hang out and have fun. My ex actually had the courage to call me immoral for sleeping with her ex-friend. She hates her to no end now. They used to be like two peas in a pod. Anyway, I heard from my older son this evening that his mom saw a bankruptcy attorney last week. Guess things are falling apart in her pathetic little world. All I know through my sons is that her husband had her take loans out against the house and property to pay off his debts from a failed business. As for why they split up I have no idea, nor have I wasted any effort to find out. I hope he did cheat on her, so she could feel a little of the betrayal and heartache I went through. But then I remember she is a selfish narcissist and even if he did cheat on her it would not teach her any lesson. Actually, me and the cop lady are thinking about going on a weekend to Las Vegas later next month. She is photo worthy, a real good looking woman. Not overly pretty but cute and she has a fantastic body. Funny story here, the first time I went out with her I ran into the ex and her husband. She saw us together and got this real angry look on her face and left. Top gal asked me who she was and I told her she was my ex-wife. 
Pop Gal laughed and told me she had given the ex a ticket for running a stop sign that same morning. My comment, it seems the wayward ones can always remember the betray contributions to a 20-year marriage anytime things don't work out well for them. This is true regardless of how many replacements are given a tryout. Story 2. So long story short, my wife told me that she wants to separate and possibly get a divorce. She said that she still loves me, cares about me, and is attracted to me physically, but that we have been fighting and arguing a lot, and over time, the emotional and romantic intimacy has gone away. She doesn't know if it can ever come back, but sees potential that it could, which is why she wants the separation for now and not a divorce right away. However, she told me that during the separation she will be talking to other men, and possibly being physically intimate and sleeping with them. I still love her and do not want a divorce. We have been together over 12 years, married for almost 9, and have two young boys together. But am I crazy for not being okay with her being with other men during this time? How in the world could we ever have the potential to get back together if she is focusing on relationships with other people and not me? I don't know that I can continue to live with her while all of that is going on, and even though I don't want it, I feel like just starting the divorce process now is the way to go. I asked her how she would feel if the roles were reversed and I wanted to be with other women, and she told me that it would be selfish of her to deny me that, and so I could if I wanted to, which I don't. We've talked about it and she's admitted that she's been flirting and texting with guys that she knows, including a coworker, but that nothing physical had happened yet, and based on our 12 plus years of knowing her and the trust that we have, I believe her. She's already admitted to the other stuff, which all happened after she asked for a separation, so I feel like if she did sleep with someone, she would not be able to lie about it and would have told me that too. I did make it clear to her that I'm not okay with her being with other people, and that I don't see how we could potentially make our marriage work when she's doing that. But she said that she's still going to be and can't say that she won't sleep with someone at some point. She's definitely changed. We've been together over 12 years and she's never been like this. So, it's hard for me to separate who she is in these past few weeks to who she has been the last 12 plus years. I have a lot of thinking to do, but I'm gathering a plan to divorcing her SAP at this point. She has definitely changed for sure. She is not the same person that she uses to be. It's weird and crazy for me to think about it, and it's hard not to worry about her as she's the mother of my children. My comment, she has probably been like this for a while but holding it in. Her feeling resentment towards you. Empty bedroom is a giveaway if that's the case. Usually, they find a backup six months prior before wanting to separate. Sucks having this sprung on you. Whatever you do don't be weak and do the so-called pick-me dance or ILYs. She thinks she loves someone else right now that gives her the tingles she hasn't felt for years. Her mindset is in the clouds. Your best bet is going gray rock 180 and cutting back on the things she depends on you for. Don't make her life easier. Start working on yourself. Story 3. My wife is highly pissed with me right now because of what happened yesterday. My biological daughter is having my first grandchild, the family's first biological great-grandchild. This is my only child. My sister and my daughter's best friend have been planning a gender reveal party and Sunday my sister called me to ask if they could have it at our house. I didn't have a problem with it. The problem is that I didn't discuss it with my wife first. Again, this is for my daughter not just some random girl I know. The problem is that this coming wed my wife is scheduled to have a minor, 45-minute procedure on her back and she doesn't want all those folks at our house on Sunday. The plans were that no one was coming into the house and everyone will remain outside. The event will most likely only be an hour or so. But she feels that since I didn't discuss it with her before agreeing to it, I don't care about her or her health. No, I'm not downplaying her procedure but it's a minor 45-minute procedure not a 5-hour open-heart surgery. She feels that she will still be home convalescing and won't be in the mood for people to come to our house. Women can spit out a baby and be home the next day up walking around. I had my gallbladder removed many years ago that took three hours or so with complication, and again I was home a few hours later and up walking the next day. I told my wife she would be fine to just walk out on the front porch for a little while but she's going completely overboard about this, I think. If I'm wrong please say so but was I wrong to agree to have my daughter's gender reveal at our house that she grew up in or should I put my wife before her and tell them to have it somewhere else because my wife may not be up to folks at our house. My wife feels that anytime I am asked anything I should always discuss it with her first or take her feelings into consideration. She says that I still think with the mindset of a single guy. She has done things in the past without discussing them with me and that's fine but the minute I do it she's ready to file for divorce. She even got angry with me this weekend because my job imposed a mandatory 8-hour workday to get caught up on paperwork. Not only did I work all day said I decided to soak up more ought by working a few hours Friday night than again sat night. She says I'm not spending any time with her. Excuse me but we're both working from home so I was just in the bedroom on my workstation. She could have sat in there with me and we could have watched TV together or even just talked. Even with working that ought we still managed to go out to eat fry, sat, and sun. Spent several hours together in church together but she's upset that I didn't spend any time with her. 
That odd is coming into our house so the more I work the better our financial situation will be. It's not like I was away from the house while she was home alone. Do I have to ask permission in my own house? Again, no one is coming into the house. Everyone is going to stay outside. It's only going to be about an hour or so tops. They're not coming in for a sit down to meet and greet. When the people get here, they'll get out of their cars and congregate in the front yard. Do the gender reveal and chat a little while to congratulate the couple and then go home. I'm not taxed to fix dinner. My sister is getting a bunch of cupcakes and that's it. My comment, I understand your wife's reaction. I'm an introvert and I have to ready myself to have people over. It's not something I do it on purpose. Socializing drains me completely. You could ask her to stay inside the house the whole time and you'll be in charge of everything before and after the event if everything goes well with her procedure. You can call your sister and tell her to look for plan B because you really don't know how the procedure is going to turn out. Reassure your wife she doesn't have to do absolutely anything for the reveal and tell her they are looking at another venue as well. If the reveal is going to be so quick, why aren't they having it at a park or another outdoor place? That way no one gets mad or offended.